This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson again with another Illustrator tutorial, but today I'm gonna to be going through this app icon. Now, so basically I've been doing work for a company called Good Earth, and I haven't done many videos about talking about icons, or how to do them, how to make them, and stuff like that. And it's all to do with gridding and using the shape tool within Adobe Illustrator. So I'm gonna just basically take you through the whole process and actually show you how I created this. Now, Good Earth is a app that is launching very soon. I have more information about it in the description. It's not my app. It's just an app that I did some design work for like the logo type and some of the branding of it. And this is part of the brand. So this is the app icon and it was a red panda. And I've basically just gone ahead and illustrated it into a very simplistic logo. It's not too simple, uh, but you can see here some of the process of me doing that. And I'm going to show you basically how I created it. And you guys will be very surprised about how easy it is to create really cool looking graphics in Illustrator, whether you're a beginner or not. So as you can see here, I've got this weird picture that I drew and you can tell I'm not very good at drawing. And I basically did this on my iPad Pro and brought it in. And this is part of the fun when it comes to creating stuff like this, when you don't have to draw very well, you just have to know where the shapes are placed. So the first thing is I import this image by dragging it in and I put it somewhere in the middle and I make it relatively big, about this size. I'm just gonna name this layer template just so I know that this layer is one that's locked. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change the transparency by coming up here and I'm gonna put it to about 30%, uh, just so we can kind of see it. We don't want it to be too easy to see. I'm gonna create a new layer on top, call this one Vector, and I'm gonna lock that template layer so now we can't actually fiddle around with it. So when it comes to stuff like this, you might be tempted to use the pen tool and like trace around it just like we normally do. Now you can do that, but that's a bit of a waste of time and plus it's not a good illustrative practice. It's not actually that hard. As you can see that this shape and many other icons like in fact nearly all of them are made up of geometric shapes and I'll explain why. You see that if I get my circle tool here and make sure it's on a stroke and go to black, I've got my circle tool here or my ellipse tool. I can create certain shapes out of this. So if I wanted to create the top of the head, I'm going to do this, create the top of the head like so. And because I know that this is going to be symmetrical, I'm actually going to put up some guides by just going to my line tool, create a line here, and then I'm just going to align this to the center and copy and paste it and rotate it horizontally. And then I'm gonna press Command-5. And that's going to basically like be our guide for us just there. And then I'm gonna move the template so it's roughly in the center, just like roughly, like so. Now we can like align everything with the artboard because it's all centered up. So I'm just gonna highlight this circle here and highlight it here. Now you may be thinking, well, why are you putting up this weird circle here? This is not the shape of its head. Well, that's because it is the shape of this part here of the head. And all we really want to work on is half of what we need to do. So I'm going to be working on the full head shape, but we're going to be focusing on doing it in symmetry. So it's easier for us. And because we're working on the head, I'm going to just carry on and I'm going to create this curve here. Now this is going to take a bit of a larger circle. So I'm going to hold shift and alt whilst dragging out a circle. And I'm going to find one that is roughly the size that I want for the angle. And this is a really good way of getting those perfect curves. And I'm going to do that. And then we're going to center both of these like so. So we have a proper geometric shape. I'm going to press command U to turn on smart guides and they're going to basically help me align this up like so. So this is the general thing we've got going on here. These two circles, uh, but this is going to be made into a logo and it's super easy to know how to do it as we go along. I'm going to create the ears now, as you can see, I'm going to put a circle here and then I'm going to just copy this by alt dragging and bringing this one here. And what I'm doing is I'm just going on the outline here of the actual shape. So I've actually just created that shape with these two circles. I'm gonna just not bother with this other side here, but I'm gonna bother with the rest down the center here.
copy this one here again. And it can get a bit confusing, as you can see here. So all I'm going to do now is highlight everything, press Command C, and then I'm going to paste it over onto a different artboard, just so we have that for reference. I am then going to go ahead and start using the Shape Builder tool in Illustrator. So I'm going to highlight everything here, then press Shift and M, or go over to my Shape Builder. Now, the Shape Builder tool is basically where you can make all these shapes disappear or reappear, depending on where they are. So this is actually a really good way of doing stuff uh, because it works super well. And we can actually change this as we go along. So I know that if I hold Alt down, it's gonna have this little minus symbol on my cursor. And that means when I hover over it and drag, it's going to get rid of it. But if I hover over it with the plus, it's going to unite those together. And this is the general style and way we're gonna be doing this. So I'm going to roughly go ahead with this because this is kind of like difficult in some cases. Um, but as you can see, I'm building the shape here pretty easily. And this is the ear. So I'm going to go on the outside of here. Here's an ear as well. So we've actually created the ear piece there. Let's do that. We actually need to get a circle here. So this is what I was talking about. We need to like make sure we've got all the circles there. So I'm going to add another circle here. And this does take a bit of practice to get used to. So now that we've got most of it done, I'm basically just hiding this layer and I'm just taking a look. Now you see it's not symmetrical yet, and that's because we've got some other things we need to do. But we've got the general shapes around here, aside from the mouth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get rid of this half of the circle. I'm just going to highlight the circle here, or the shape, go to where the guides are, and I'm going to cut it, because that is the center guides. And then I'm going to highlight everything on this side, press O, press Option, and click on this anchor point. And I'm going to copy it like this. And I'm just going to copy it vertically. So we have like a vertical copy now of what's going on. I'm going to join these two together. I'm going to make sure that everything is spaced out correctly. Okay, so now that we've got all these things down here and we've made it symmetrical, basically I just flipped it over. I'm gonna create the mouth now because we can do this, I think, generally with ease. So I'm just gonna create a circle here. And then create another circle, like bring it down by hovering over it down here. And then I'm going to highlight both of these circles here. Get rid of this one, get rid of that one. We've got the mouthpiece there, and the same with the nose. I'm going to make a really bad nose for now. In fact, how did I make the nose in the other one? Uh, it's the same process. You just sort of like create a circle, like center it, create another one, like so. Go into the Shape Builder tool, get rid of the outside ones, like that. And the same with the mouth. We just go like this and we just create kind of like a mouthpiece for it. And this should work nicely like so. Like that. We've got the mouthpiece right there. So now we've got that all done and it, there is a lot of refinement needed. We need to like move some stuff about, but we've got everything. Everything seems to be symmetrical and stuff like that. I'm just going to group them and make them symmetrical, making sure they are. I'm going to create a new artboard and just go ahead and copy this onto the new artboard just because I don't want to destroy it or anything. Uh, and now we want to go ahead and fill this in, because if I go and right click or change it to a fill, you'll see that everything's just filled in, but we don't want that. We want certain parts just filled in and certain parts that aren't. So I'm going to highlight it and press K. I'm going to press black and make sure it's on my fill. Then I'm just going to fill in the black here, like so, fill in the parts that need to be filled in just by clicking on it. And now we've got our artwork right there and ready to go. And there's a lot of adjustments that are needed. But if you want to use this as an actual logo, because this is a live paint thing now, we need to go up to object path. Oh no, in fact, object expand. We need to do this a couple of times to make sure it's expanded properly. And now we've actually got our logo design right there. And we can change the color of it and we can do whatever. We can add a gradient to it if we need to. Like a proper 
cool gradient sort of feel. And we can do whatever we need to do with it. And there is your app icon. And if you want to see if it fits well within an actual app icon, it's good to use the parameters of an app icon. So what I'll do is after creating that stroke, I'm going to go ahead and scale that stroke down a bit. Is I'm going to create a new art board here. Hold shift to make a square. Go ahead and I'm going to take off the fill. And then I'm going to just move these corners in a bit just to round them off. Drag this in and see if it fits within the parameters. Maybe extend the stroke a bit, increase that stroke and see if it fits within the parameters and then align it to your artboard together and see whether the app icon fits within those parameters like so. Maybe even add a fill to it like a, like a blue fill or whatever, just to see what it looks like. This isn't the final color of the app icon, it's just an example for you. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something a bit more new on this, on how to create different shapes and stuff like that. And it does take a long time to understand it and to practice it, as you've seen. I haven't done a very good job here, but it's just to show you what's going on. Anyway, if you like this video, then click that subscribe button and I'll catch you next week in next week's video. See you soon. This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If any of you are interested in learning UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design bootcamp intended to get you a full time job in the industry. You can learn more about this at devmountain.com or click the link in the description below.